Good morning, everybody. Michelle here. Um, today I thought I would come and show you kind of what I've been up to. I made this altered paperclip folio um, a, a few months back, and um, I'm I'm really enjoying it. And it's it was a lot of fun to make, so I thought I would make another one, and um, hopefully you guys will will tag along with me. Um, it's a really fun project to have um, to have on hand. It's kind of like an ephemera folder, but in this case, it holds paper clips. So um, we'll do. A, I wanted to do a, just a quick flip through of what I have um, here, and then and then I'll 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 just do a well. I'll try to make it quick um, video on on how I put this together. So I have a bunch of altered paper clips, like I'm sure many of you do, and. Um, I found this book to be super helpful in in storing them and and it and actually even if I don't use the paper clips I think it's kind of pretty to flip through the papers I'm using are all pretty heavy cardstock um, this is paper it's all got glitter on it and um, when you fold them sometimes they get you know like I don't know if this is gonna show it but like when you fold this paper, sometimes you get the edges are kind of rough and the the glitter sort of t breaks away. I mean, this will be hidden in the spine, so it'll be fine. But I always find this paper kind of hard to use, um, you know, making journals. Um, it doesn't it doesn't coffee dye very well, and um, and it the the colors are so bright and and anyway. Okay, so <laughs> enough of that. I'm going to do a quick flip through of this and then I'll show you kind of my basic um, method of doing this. So um, actually, I'm going to tell you something. There was a book I had originally. This was the first one I made. It was this tiny little um, book that I had um, and I had my paper clips just hanging off the edges. This book was inspired by Lolly Palooza. And we used, um, she used uh, double-sided tape to put the pages on. And it's all just like single, single um, sheets of, uh, looks like Tim Holtz paper here. And, um, and yeah, anyway, I used it and I, and I used it for a while. Uh, but it, it, I found it to be very, very small. And I ran out of room really quickly. And so rather than making another one of these, I decided that I wanted a bigger one, almost like an ephemera folder, but a an altered paperclip folder, folio, um, however we refer to them as. So anyhow, okay, so um, those are the papers that I used um, because I don't use them in journals. And uh, I thought it would be a good way to use them up. I've had these papers for years and years. So... Most of the pages have bands, bands like this on them, which are very, very handy for popping altered paper clips onto. Um, it, 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 they're, it's really easy that way. Like, you know, they just go on and off very easily. Um, then I, what I did is some of the pages, because I wanted things to be a little bit different, I decided to put these little slots in here. Now, there might be hard to see on camera, but it's it's like a little slot with the little holes popped in it. There, the what I found about the slots is that they're hard to access with a paper clip. Um, like you can pull your paper clips out easily, but putting them in. Well, I know this. I made it look really easy there, but some of them later on in the book, I found it difficult to get the the paper clips into the slots. So I decided for the new one, we're, I'm just going to do the bands. But you're more than welcome to do the slots. Um, it just requires an X-Acto knife just to cut a slit. And then you can poke holes in the end of the slits with your crocodile if you have one. Uh, if you do make slots, just remember not to glue this page onto this page. And we'll get to that further as we go through the, the how-to video. Um, because then in that case, you wouldn't be able to access the slots for your paper clips if it's glued. 
anyhow, I found throughout throughout my use of this book that the bands work the best. I, I like the bands. They're on there really nice and strong. They're double double card stock, so it's really sturdy. Um, holds the paper clips really well. And um, so, yeah, uh, we'll just flip through this one. This, this one here, the slots were definitely easier to access, but... Um, I, I'm st I just decided that I'm going to do the bands on this one. I, I prefer the bands, and um, so that's what I'm going to do with the new ones. And so there's, you know, there's some that haven't been completed yet, but the ideas are there. You know, the the thing is there to to help inspire me, which I've been really lacking lately, and um, and I, I think lots of people have been. It's, yeah, anyway, so... It's been a it's been a weird year. Uh anyhow, so yeah, so there's another page with the slots. Didn't and like I said, didn't really care for them. So we're going to do bands. Isn't that a cute paper clip? It's a little dog. <laughs> anyway, I have a few of those, so I thought, well, maybe I don't know about dangling anything from it, but it looks cute in the book. And so each signature is actually only well, it's four sheets of paper, but it's only, it's like just two sheets. Like I didn't add anything into the center of the signatures. They're all just like one page. You could kind of consider it one page. They were glued onto muslin or no canvas and then just sewn in with a five hole, five hole pamphlet stitch, which you can kind of see the back of the book there or the, the spine of the book. And of course, the beautiful boho tassel. <laughs> and um, so then uh, the last the last page, what I did was I added this uh, photo album envelope. And I think what this was for was for a CD and maybe negatives. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, I just picked this up at a secondhand store and took the book apart just to get these pages out. So um, what I'm thinking is that this will be kind of like a craft on the go sort of book. And um, so I can put, you know, the items like pictures or labels or um, some fibers, like whatever I'm going to use to make my altered paper clips. You know, I might put some, you know, a little envelope with, with some dangly things in it. And, um, you know, I can put that in there so that when I go sit in front of the TV, I've got items to play with, um, you know, like a bunch of empty empty paper clips and this page here I put a pocket in the side this the new book we're gonna make I'm gonna put the pocket on the bottom simply because I, I like the side pockets for tags or or journal cards but for items to make paper clips um, things things aren't in there that well and I didn't want things falling out so and then there's the back and then so the this one at the front and the one at the back, I've used a snap tool, which I will link below uh, to Amazon.ca. Um, and it will, I'll link it to the tool that I bought for these plastic snaps. Um, so I just put a piece of fabric there to hold on to uh, altered safety clips or safety pins. And kind of like what I have here. And like you can even hang your 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 um, you know boho beads or tassels, whatever dangly things, whatever you've got that dangles. Uh, I put this um, ribbon here to try to help hold it down. It's not really doing its job, but <laughs> it looks pretty. And then that piece of fabric is also um, snapped in, and I put the snap on the canvas before I glued it onto the book. So um, I hope you like this idea and I hope you follow along with me. And um, yeah, so that, that's a paper, altered paperclip folio. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do, um, I, I, should, I should also mention, I already made the cover. Um, I had this cover um, for a while now. <laughs> and um, isn't it cute? The little owls anyhow um 
So I've had this cover sitting around for a while and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. So I thought it would be perfect for the folio, uh, for the Ultra Paperclip folio. Um, it is six, about six and three quarters wide and it's about nine and three quarters tall. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm using 12 by 12 inch papers. So they're 12 by 12 inch and I just, I cut the length off at nine and a half, which, which, um, it, it, it's a good size for a nine and three quarter book, nine and three quarter inch book. So I've already cut all my pages. I've, I've got 10 pages picked out here. And um, now you can certainly use cardstock that's already got a design on the back. And in that sense, you, you don't actually have to double them. Um, but I like it doubled because I think it makes it a little bit sturdier when it's holding on to things that are dangling rather than, you know, just paper crafts. Um, and, and, and like this one, like this one, actually it was sufficient to be honest. It, it was sufficient, but because this is a bigger book and I, and I like to use up more of these papers, um, I will be either gluing them together. I definitely will be sewing. Um, you don't need a sewing machine if you don't have one, cause you can absolutely glue these pages together. Um, but I'm going to be, I'm just going to sew the edge and, and then, um, and then that way I don't have to glue them. So, um, let's get started. I've got 12 or 10 pages picked out. And now what I've done already is I've already scored, I've already scored eight of them. And so I thought I would just save a couple just to, just to show you how I, what I did. So I've got this, we are memory keeper scoreboard. And um, so I'm just going to, because I know it's already 12 inches across, I'm just going to score right at the six inch line. And then that way it'll, it, it helps to fold these, these sort of glitter cardstock pages that, that um, don't always fold that well on their own. So it, I don't know if you can see, but the, the glitter starts to to come off the spine but I I think the integrity of the paper is still intact it's just really the glitter so when I go to sew it into the book I uh, it'll still be a strong a strong fold like it'll still be a good strong piece of paper so um, this one here I'm gonna I'm just going to score it this way because it's going to be the back side of that signature and like I mentioned the signature will just have it's the two pages, but I'll call it a one page signature. So we'll just fold that and then that will go in there like that. And that will be the signature. That will be a one page signature. Okay, so let's get started. Um, it, it's, it's really fairly straightforward. Um, the pages that I have picked here. I've got all the scraps from the other book I made and from this book and a bunch of others, like scraps from, from previous projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with the first page and I'm going to, um, so what I'm going to do is just create bands. So I'll have some going this way and then I'll have some, you know, going, going vertical. And, um, and another thing I noticed too, that I do like about the bands is if you fold it in half and then you've got a folded edge at the top to pop the paper clip into and I think it goes in easier um, and I'm sure it would go fine in the in the side that's been glued but I, I like the the glued or the folded edge at the tops like so it'll go like that you know across your page Actually, we'll we'll just start with this one. Um, so it's going to fold like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a little bit of glue. And that's another thing with gluing onto glitter. Um, I think most glues work. Um, I'm using a kind of a, 
This is a this is a craft glue. It's called Dura Pro, um, and it's a polyvinyl acetate uh, developed for crafts. So I've been finding that it's it's been working really well. It just it takes a little bit longer to dry. Um, but I, I just put it in this bottle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a, like a, a little bit of glue there. And I'm going to kind of rub it in. Like just to kind of cover the edge nicely for the, um, for the glue. And I'm going to do it on the other side as well. I attempted to curve these corners. You know, use the corner rounder but um yeah it didn't turn out so nicely so I changed my mind on the corner rounding so I'm just wiping my hands off here so that's the folded edge at the top like I I folded it in half and then glued that inside and then um scored it so that it was scored at the six inches so this first sheet um I think what I'm going to do is just We'll just put it right at the top, right at the top of the page, and I'm just eyeballing to make sure it's on there, you know, fairly straight. And like I said about this glue, it does take a little bit longer to dry, but it's um, it's proven to be a pretty good glue for me um, over the last few months, you know, with the little crafts that I've managed to do here and there. So um, I could put, you know what, I might do it. Just put little paper clips, just to sort of clamp it for now, just to make sure it stays down. And then um, when I'm finished putting the other bands on, I will, uh, I'll just pull them off. So the next band for this page, so this page looks like it could probably use three bands. So um, let's see here. I'm, Gonna try. I'm gonna tr because my paper's already super colorful. I'm gonna make the bands super colorful. <laughs> okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is just score this, score this in half. Uh, it's two and three eighths. So let's say, let's say it's about two and a half inches. So that's about one and a quarter. Is about halfway. I can always trim it down too when when I once I fold it if I'm finding that it's either too wide or uh, you know or if some of the white edges are sticking out and I also distressed the edge of this band but I found that um, I'm not I'm not a fan of it I should have just left it because we're just gonna go with with just the bright glittery shiny colors of of this paper so now I had trimmed that one um, I th it's not a problem if this one's wider uh, and it and it looks like it, it's gonna work there so I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and I'm just gonna glue this uh, this these two pieces together and then um, I'll score them I forgot to do it I, I'll score the middle so that when I go to, um, you know, fold the page, uh, th the middle will be scored. Okay, so I think I'm just going to rub this in a bit because I don't want too much glue seeping out the edges. All right. It's, yeah, I don't even know if that's a process that needs to be done, but it works for me. So we'll just... We'll just glue that shut, give it a second. I'm sure you could use Fabri-Tac. Um, I'm sure that that would, that would hold it closed immediately. Oh yeah, see, I got a, I, it's a little bit out of order, but that, or uh, un, unaligned. But that's all right, because that's gonna be underneath anyway. Actually, I don't like that white edge, so I'm gonna just snip it a bit. And, um, yeah, actually that glue. So, yeah, you could probably use Fabri-Tac. Um, it's kind of an expensive glue to use on paper, but, um, you know, it works. It works really nicely, and it dries really quickly. 
So I think I'm just going to put this one right here. That gives me enough room to put to put a clip up there and then the paper clip and then that. So I'm going to do that. And once again, just, you know, kind of put a good dollop and then I will rub it in. Because I really want this to hold. Well, mind you, I am going to sew it. So uh, that's, yeah, so I kind of forgot about that. I'm going to sew them. But if you don't have a sewing machine and you're not sewing them, I would make sure that you get a good, a good amount of glue on there and make sure it really sticks because you're going to be using it, you know, you're going to be putting paper clips in and out of it. And, um, and so you want it to, to really be stuck on there. Oh, pff. well, there you go. So see that happens too. Where was my glue? Yeah. See, so what I was saying about this glue, it doesn't dry super quick. Um, but it will hold, and that's what I like about it. Okay, <laughs> I just wipe off my hands on my pants. <laughs> okay, oh, no wonder I have glue stuff all over my clothing. <laughs> okay, let's just, um, I'm gonna clamp those two because I like that idea. I don't think they'll have to be clamped for long, but it will hold them. Okay, I gotta cover my glue. So next one, um, let's go with the, uh, oh boy, these bright colors are throwing me off a bit. <laughs> um, don't wanna do that one? Yeah, let's do that one. So you don't need to actually use a scoreboard to score these, but I just think it gives it a nicer, a nicer fold. So, uh, what did I say? Two and a half, one and a quarter is about middle. There's, there's no need to be perfect with this. You can always trim them up after, you know, like when I fold it like this, well, this one came out pretty nicely, but you can always, um, you can always just, you know, take your, uh, take your cutter or whatever and, um, I'm just going to do this one so that it's more the same size as, as the top one. Get a good grip on your ruler, good grip on your rotary blade, and close the blade. And there. So that's what you can do to straighten out your, your band. So we'll, once again, we'll just do this. I know this seems like a long time just for one page, but I think you'll like it. I think you'll like using this book. It's, it's a, it's, um, well, plus it just looks kind of pretty with all those paper clips dangling and I don't know if you like dangles. <laughs> I love dangles, so I like anything that dangles. Okay. So let's close that. It's it's actually it's grabbing pretty pretty well. Um, you know. Okay, so let's do that one there. Um, kind of make it even. Okay, same process. Did I put my lid on? Yes, I did. Same process, glue on the ends, and then just a little bit of a little bit of a wipe, so there's not too much ooze. And the folded edge at the top, and well, it's not going to be perfectly even. But you know what? I didn't. I don't want to measure. I know I did a lot of measuring with that first one, and. That was kind of annoying. It was a fun project, but a little bit annoying. Oh, and I forgot to score these two. Oh, well. I might still be able to actually score the whole page. And I might 
I might glue those centers down too, but for now I'm just going to do this. We're just going to do this and then um, I'll do the second page and then we'll take the paper clips off and go from there. So that's, that's going to be the first page and it's going to be folded in half that way and sewn on to the second page. So now this is our second page. I don't want to use any of the same bands. So we're going to try to find something that's sort of not, no, no, it doesn't need to match. I've already decided that it doesn't need to match. <laughs> I'm going to trim some of these down. I don't really like the wide band. So, um, it's about three inches. So if we make it, let's make them two and a half inches. Let's just make them all two and a half inches. Okay. I'm going to score this at, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I took out my rotary cutter for that. That would have been crazy. Um, okay, so one and a quarter. Okay. So we're going to fold that. It's, um... So this, this is a good example of um, something that you can just trim after you've already scored it and folded it. So you can just line up your ruler or your cutter if you use a whatever tool you use to cut. Um, this is my favorite because um, I've been doing it for years and it works well for me. Um, I'm very careful with my rotary cutter. Uh, it's a very sharp blade, uh, but I, I, I like the results. So, well, plus I've... I kind of am a quilter, so I have spent many, many days cutting fabric. Okay, so this first page, we went horizontal with the, with the bands. I think this one, I'm kind of thinking of going um, vertical. That's what I'm going to do. I think we're going to do two bands vertically. Okay. I, I like that idea actually, just to switch it up a bit. Um, I might fast forward these parts. I'm, I'm lear slowly learning how to edit. <laughs> it's still a bit complicated because I'm not super tech savvy, but I'm kind of learning. Learning these days takes a long time because you gotta you have to Google everything and <laughs> figure out all the terminology and. Um, but I, you know, I don't mind. Kind of like that old thing about learn something new every day. Okay, so we're just going to do that. Now, I know that this band already, I know, is too long for the page. So, I think I'm going to cut it right now. It does. It needs to be nine and a half. So, I think what I'm going to do is just trim it right at that halfway mark. Okay, I hope I didn't get too much glue on my blade. I don't think so. Okay, so now we are gonna go vertical on here. And you've, I mean, we've done this a few times now, so you know what I'm doing. Uh, I think we're going to do, okay, because my fold is on the right side, I'm going to put this one over here, about here, so that, um, am I straight? So that when we take our paper clip, well, because I'm right-handed too, so that makes a difference, right? 
So then I could put my paper clip in that way. And it's not going in right now because I'm holding it. Um, and then I think the other band I'll put in vertically, but with the fold on the left. Is that straight? <laughs> I think so. Okay. And this can all be trimmed up like I, I already see a little bit there and a little bit there. But we can trim that up after. So I think, um, I think I'm going to use this one. Uh, let's see here. Let's just... I think I prefer to do it this way. This one's also two and a half. One and a quarter. I'm going to trim it after I've, after I've glued it. Okay. So this will be the last one on this page. I'm just going to put the two bands, the two bands on this page. And then I think on the other side, I'm going to just probably put maybe one just right down the middle. Okay. Okay. So we've got that, and I'm going to give it a second. Well, my blade isn't going to like this very much, but I am going to cut right through <laughs> the wet glue. This is not that. Yeah, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't necessarily suggest this, but I'm. I want to get this done, so I am going to cut right through the glue. <laughs> Yeah, I can feel it. It does not like that. Oh, it doesn't look like there's glue on it. Okay, and so this one here, I am just going to, uh, you know what, I'm going to trim it at nine and a half as well because um, then I'll know where to put the glue. I'll know where to put the glue at the um, at the bottom. So this is uh, nine and a half at the five and a half inch mark. Okay. Okay. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to throw that down. So now the fold is on the left hand side over here. Oh, which side do I like better? Oh, well, they're both the same. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do there. We're just going to glue those two down. I've, yeah. Okay. And you know what? As as even as possible. Like I've got about an inch and a half on that side, so I want to try to get about an inch and a half on that side. These don't look, oh there, that looks straight. There, does that look straight? <laughs> I think so. Okay, I'm not going to clamp these ones because I'm not disturbing them, so they should be, they should be okay. Okay, so this side, I think what I want to do is um whoa that's bright let's see um let me just grab a piece no because what i want to do this is gonna have to be a sturdy sturdy piece of cardstock because what i want to do these ones aren't long enough is just put like one main band down the um the center Okay, this might be a bit wide, but I, I don't mind that. So let's see here. Um, so that's six inches. If we go, let's go two and a half, just because my ruler measures two and a half, and it's super easy to line up. <laughs> so we're going to do a band right down the middle. at two and a half. Right? And then um, 
so you can stick your paper clip in either side. Okay, this needs to be trimmed once again to nine and a half, which is about four and a half. Line it off. Good grip on the ruler. And another thing I might do too before I sew is I might round these corners. I because th I, th I think I'll like that the rounded corners. Did that move? I don't think so. Anyhow, I I I know this is not a super exciting video, but it's kind of a fun idea, and I and I hope you uh, I hope you play along. Um, of course, I would love to see to see them, but to see what you do. Um, but oh, maybe you'll make a video and I'll be able to see it that way. Or you could, um, you could definitely tag me on Instagram under fabric lacing paper and I could see it that way. That would be a good idea. Because I'd love to see what other people come up with. I know this one here, it's super colorful. And it's not everybody's favorite. But like I said, the reason I'm doing it like this is to get rid of a lot of these papers. Not get rid of, but, you know, use them up. I bought them for a reason. I bought them because I liked them back when I bought them. Um, and just because I'm not super fan of them now, uh, at least I'm using them up. Okay, I think that's all. I, I hope it's on. Well, some parts look like they haven't grabbed yet. You know what? I might have to wait. I think we're going to wait um, until that's completely dry, and then I'm going to fold it, and I'll show you how I go about that. Okay, I'm back. Um, I did something a little bit different. So uh, on, the, on that first page that I did the bands, I had these bands on it, and after I looked at it for a bit and gave it some more thought, I realized that I didn't actually care for all those extra colors. I'm having some trouble. Um, you know, not only did they not match, um, but it was just too bright. It was too much. So I just pulled them all off and I just popped on bands, did it exactly the same way that I showed you the first time, and just popped on bands that... That, that matched the the main the main paper. Anyhow, so I finished that one, and then um, I did the same thing with this orange um, sheet. I just popped off the original bands and just put on new ones. Uh, so that's all I did that was different. Um, I did glue the two together, and so I will trim this up before I sew it. And I am gonna I'm going to. Um, round the corners but but we'll I'll do that to, we'll do that together uh, I just wanted to show you what I did so it is this it's the same background page I just switched up the bands I think I decided that I did prefer it to be slightly more matchy <laughs> so anyhow okay so that was this is our first signature uh, and all I need to do now is round the corners and so so this second one um, I thought I would start because um, I didn't want to bore you guys to tears with all the cutting and trimming and, and gluing. Um, this page here, uh, I did basically the same thing. I made I made the, the bands and then I just glued them at the top and the bottom. The, these bands across the page, because I didn't want it super, super tight so that I wasn't able to get paper clips in, I created these little tabs inside. Um, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you because I'm gonna do it for these ones. But anyway, so that's gonna be the f uh, probably the inside. So that'll probably be the inside of this one. So what I did here is um, because I didn't want to cover up this word peaceful and I don't want to cover up the the word calm. I um, decided to just make sort of mini bands. And and so what I did in this instance is. Um, so I just took my strips of paper and you can make them 
any measurement you want. Um, I think mine were about three inches long by about an inch. Yeah, an inch and a quarter. Um, but you can, you know, definitely do it however you like. Whatever size of bands that you prefer. Okay, so what I did is um, I just... I just, this is not an exact, nothing is perfect and exact here. So I just folded it in about, you can use your scoreboard too, but this was just easier because then I didn't have to pull the board out. And I just folded it over, looks like about a quarter of an inch. Um, yeah, I think you can see this. And then, um, so I just kind of did the same thing on both sides. Just fold it in. Uh, scoreboard would probably do a better job, but your nail also works and then um, so you've got those two tabs so what I did is I I just cut off the um, just a small corner of one of like of each of the sides of the tab so that when it's folded in those corners these corners here aren't gonna if I didn't fold it completely straight they won't peek out you won't see them uh, it just makes I think for a slightly cleaner edge um, so anyway, I did this with, with all four of these, and then you've got that, and then I just glue those tabs, and then um, then I'll put them on the page. So let's go through this again. Um, just fold it in about a quarter of an inch, and um, like, I wonder if I should, you know what, I think I probably should sh um, score, score them. It, it's not it like I said it doesn't have to be exact so uh, I'll just score it right there where I started folding it we're just gonna go about a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch in for each of them and um, yeah that, like I said not it's whatever measurement of band that you want uh, I'm just kind of showing you how I did it for my size of pages and and book. Okay, I think that'll be easier to deal with once it's been scored. So, um, whoops. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off the corners just like that. All of them. And last one. Okay, and then we'll just fold in the, the sides of all of them. And then it's just going to be a matter of deciding where we want those placed. So, um, so for this side with where it said peaceful, I just kind of put the the bands around around that part. So, like for calm, maybe what I'll do because I do have a whole you know a whole area here with nothing. Um, maybe I'll just kind of do like a row like that, and then maybe put that one kind of sideways, and then I can put a side. Uh, a side paper clip in that has danglies and it'll come outside the book, which, well, as I've mentioned a few times, I like the danglies, and I like them dangling out of the top or the bottom. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to glue all of these on, and um, I'll just kind of show you what I do. So I put down the first side, make sure it's down try to keep it straight and then I lift it a little bit and then put down this side because there's glue on it I didn't want to stick my finger on it so then anyway that's how you get it in there and then I use this little um this it's just you can use probably anything anything flat like even a piece of cardstock um, but I just kind of get it in there and get it up to the edge and then you know press down it's because sometimes glue gets onto this part 
and then you don't want that part stuck down you want there to be some some flexibility you know like what I mean so that it's not completely stuck down to the page so I just put this in there and then I press down make sure it's not stuck and then I do that on both sides um, just to make sure and then I'll go back and check too like these ones that I did before I'll go back and make sure that it's not glued down to the to the tab anyhow so I will finish these other four and be right back okay so I finished off uh, the second or that page the same as this side and um, I gl then I glued it and I also uh, did a line of stitching down the middle of this band um, my machine didn't really like doing that stitch on the paper but that's okay it still looks fine um, yeah so anyway so that's our second completed signature and now we're going on to the third and I I know I said I wasn't gonna do slits um, but I really like them um, so I, I'm I thought I would try this time to make them a bit bigger and, and they might be able it might be easier for me to get the um, the paper clips into bigger slots uh, so I thought I'd give that a try anyhow so what I did because this one is going to be attached to this one like that's how it's going to go into the book like this I just took my my distress sponge and and just colored colored it like that so that when if there's nothing in there you didn't just see you know sheer white like like you would have if, if I hadn't done that and um, yeah so anyway it'll be like that and and then it's not just you know completely white inside the slots but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I did um, I'm gonna do the slots on this side as well and I'm just gonna have then that one page of slots the rest of the book will be will be the bands again so what I did is because I did this side I thought I would show you it's easier to cut the slots out on the white side of the page it's easier to see so all I did is I just marked you can do this however you want um, you know I, I could give you a bunch of measurements on on what I did you know like an inch from the top an inch and a half from the sides but it's not going to make a difference because it, it's all dependent on what size of book you're doing so um, all I did is rather than just do a single slot just one line I thought if I made them a bit wider it might be easier um, to get the paper clips in and out so I'm just gonna show you oh I think a bird just went by oh anyway <laughs> sorry uh, I'm just gonna show you what I do now you can use your your metal ruler for this if you feel more comfortable with it um, I'm just using my plastic one with my X-Acto knife. So I'm just going to line it up at uh, at a mark and then I'm just going to go down and I went down two inches and just cut straight through the paper and um, you should be able to go all the way down like for if you line if you mark it out where you want the cuts on the white part or you know on the back side of your page you should just be able to um, you know just kind of do the process of of well me I'm doing every two inches so I did two inches and then I left one open I did two inches left one open and then two inches again and then just make sure you go right through to the to your mat you know right through the paper and then I'm just gonna scooch it over a little bit and um, just line it up with the lines that I've already got there and then just cut two inches again and then two inches again and then the last two inches on this side and then to get the tops all I do is I didn't even use my ruler I just it just went across it like that and if I if I went through my entire paper um, I didn't go through it on this side it, it appears it appears as though I didn't go all the way through and then I'm gonna just um, just cut the bottom there and this should just pop right out like that uh, if you've got a little bit of a mess it's okay if it's on this side because that's gonna be the inside of, of, of your other piece 
So I'll just do those other two uh, and then I'll come back and we'll go on to the um, the second, oh, my blade fell out, weird, um, to the second side of this one, which I said, actually, it'll be bands, so you just, just, you know, if you're doing, if you're trying to follow along, just do whatever kind of bands you've liked, you know, either, either horizontal bands or, um, the vertical bands or just the little pieces, you know because that's all I'm going to do on that page. And then I will glue that one together and we'll come back after and we'll do the fourth page, which is, um, this will be the fourth or not page. Sorry. Yeah. Signature. That'll be the fourth signature. And then the fifth signature, I forgot to mention that we're doing five signatures. The fifth signature is going to be, um, pockets so that I can put, um, ephemera and that type of thing inside so that I can, uh, like I mentioned earlier, have it as a, a craft on the go, you know, like a to go if I'm sitting in front of the TV or, or, you know, what have you, um, I'll have everything, everything I need with me in the book. So I'll just get this one out. It looks like that one needs to be cut again. It's, it definitely is easier to go right through the paper the first time because um, to try to line it back up again properly, it's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> anyway, oh, it didn't go through the, I don't know if you can see that, it didn't go through the, the glitter, the glitter band that's there. So we'll just cut that and, okay, so then... Um, I will finish those last three and come back after I've put the bands on this page and I've glued these two together and we will come back and do the fourth signature. Okay? Okay, so we finished off the third page. Um, I did the slits on both the front and the back and then on the inside uh, I just did this. I was trying to save some of the graphics on on the, the background paper so um, that's why I did it kind of in this in this sort of way to kind of keep the castle you know and, and that kind of stuff but and then I have glued it together um, just along the edges because if I had glued the entire inside we would have absolutely zero access to um, to these slits right like so anyway, I, I, I'm not sure that the bigger slits are making that much of a difference, but I feel like I can get the paper clip in easier with um, a wider slit. And um, so yeah, uh, that's the third. So that's the third signature. So we have one, two, three signatures so far. And now I am working on the the fourth signature that's going to hold the paper clips. Uh, so the first thing I've done, I've done the first page, just did three bands going that way, very similar to the first page. And then the back page, um, you know, like the back page that'll be attached to this one. Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking that I would like some more horizontal um, bands but I wanted to use this one this is the one I pulled off of the very first page when I made it a little too colorful but it matches this very nicely and it's already glued and everything so um, I was thinking of putting this on here and then what I might do is um, I, um, maybe I'll just do a band a band down the center uh, I was trying to stay kind of matchy. Um, so, oh, there, that's a good one. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a band down the center. I might just, uh, I might actually just start it, start it there. Um, yeah, actually I might do it like that. Uh, so anyway, so let's, um, I think I'm going to do that, but I'm gonna just I'm just gonna sew this piece on 
Uh, so for now, I'll, I'll just, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just, um, yes, yeah, so I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> so trying to, to, um, get four signatures for paper clips. So this one, I'm just going to glue it up at the top like that. And then, um, I am going to trim the bottom so that I can glue that and then I'll take it to my sewing machine and um, sew that one and then come back and finish finish the the fourth signature with um, oh do I want yeah I think I'm just gonna do one I'm just gonna do one horizontal I think but I'll take a look. Anyhow, okay, I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and sew this. So now we have the fourth signature done. Uh, I went ahead and put the two bands down the middles, and then I did put just the one across the top. Uh, and I went ahead and glued it to the front of, of the page, and then I sewed, I rounded the corners and sewed around all of the signatures actually. So um, the four, four signatures have all been sewn and corners, corners rounded. And now the going to go to, to do the fifth signature. Uh, what I decided to do was make it more like a, like a, uh, a an ephemera folio where I took, um, this is a projector film. Like it's, it's almost like, um, an acetate. It's just a, it's just like a clear plastic film. And I just went ahead and made pockets. And then I did do the bar across the top. Cause I was thinking if I have a paper clip that is in mid construction, um, you know, then I'd have a place to store it while I'm, while I'm working on it. So I ended up doing that and, um, that now all ha now we have all five signatures complete. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, do the five hole pamphlet stitch into our cover. We're going to, uh, sew them in and now you definitely could get fancier with this. You could put lace or ruffles or tabs along the sides. Um, the only fancy thing I'm going to do to this particular one is I'm going to hang buttons from the from the the middle um, signature, middle of the signature where we tied off. So let's get started. Now there are tons of videos on on YouTube on how to sew in your signatures into your journals. I'm gonna show you what I do, um, and then you can either use the way I'm doing it, or you can, you know, go check out other videos. Um, like I said, there are tons. I learned how to do it online, so I don't remember who, sh who I learned it from, but um, I did learn it from a YouTube video. So, having said that, the first thing I did was, um, I just cut out a sheet of paper, the length and width of my spine. And then I just made a bit of a grid. Now, it kind of looks like I sort of measured and was sort of perfect about it, but I wasn't. All I did was find the, um, the middle line here, going this way, and then this middle line. And then from there, I just kind of eyeballed it to get two other lines, one, you know, two on either side of the middle. And then same with the vertical lines, um, two on either side of the middle. Because I'm do I've got five signatures, one, two, three, four, five. And um, I'm doing a five hole pamphlet stitch. So I'll show you how I do that in, in a minute here. So, uh, yeah, so just draw yourself a grid or do it how you like. Even just eyeball it with your pokey tool. You'll need a pokey tool. 
anything. You'll need something that will be able to poke through the spine of the book and also poke through your, you know, your signatures. Um, so the next thing I do, just to sort of give me a rough, a rough sort of um, <clears throat> estimate as to where to poke the holes in my signatures, um, I just take my grid and 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 it this grid is going to be longer than your signature because it's the height of the um the book cover so i just kind of eyeball it get you know so i have about the same amount here as here and then what i'll do is um i'll just do a little dot and well you, you'll probably be able to see these ones but once I poke holes in there, I'm going to poke right on the dot. So uh, you won't be able to see like you can see the five dots there. So so this gives me a bit of a head start. Like I will poke all of these holes before I start doing the sew-in um, process. So I'm just going to do this to all, <clears throat> excuse me, all five signatures. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'll show you what I do next. So that was the second. Third thing. And I did put some paper clips just to kind of show, you know, how they're going to work. They'll be, I mean, obviously it's for altered paper clips. And I did kind of want to mention another thing. If you're sewing your your journals. I'll do that in a second. So yeah, once again, just kind of eyeballing it into the middle and then uh, just putting a small little mark where the line meets. That one's a little bit awkward. Okay, four, and then the fifth one. Okay, we're almost done. I sure hope you guys are, are doing one. I think that'd be fun. Okay, so there. Uh, we're we're going to just um, poke holes in those. Uh, but what I'm going to do with this grid right now is I'm actually just going to make sure it's on it's on the it's on the spine nice and and even, and then I'm just going to do um, yeah that might get in the way no it won't so I'm just going to put the paper clip there just to hold it in place while I'm poking holes into it. Okay, now some people use books uh, like um, you know like they take. I'll show I just want to show you. So they'll just open up a book, then they'll take their signature, and then they'll poke poke their holes right into the book. Um I, I don't actually do that. <laughs> I I I just maybe because I have the mat on my desk, I'm not sure, but anyway, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll just I'll just poke I'll just poke all the holes right straight through to the other side right right on my mat and just try to get it straight through you know as straight as possible it doesn't need to be a super big hole you just need to be able to get your needle through it so so I'll do that so that they're all ready to go um, when I start to sew And and it really doesn't take doesn't take very long. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably just do two of the signatures with you, and then um, and then uh, I might I don't know speed up the video or <laughs> if I can remember how. <laughs> 
and then yeah and then we're and then we're done this project and then you've got a really fun folio to um display all of your altered paper clips and so hopefully after this after this video is done i'm i want to start making some more clips so i'll um i'll come on and and show you what i end up with after after i have all the clips done Okay, so we're going to take our um, our book cover, and with that grid in place, um, I, I usually just start in the middle, and I just poke a hole right straight through the book, and then, and then I just, all the intersecting lines are where there's going to be, uh, where there will be holes. So I just, I just poke holes right at all the intersections, um, try to make sure I keep my grid straight. Um, the only thing is, is that like when the stitches are in, you'll be able to see them on this side. So I think you, you want them probably as straight as possible. I'm not putting any buttons in the spine or anything like that. I used to do that. I did quite a number of books with buttons in the spines. Um, but I found the book hard to... Hard to use, hard to work in. I'm not saying that I won't put buttons in spines again because I think it looks beautiful. Uh, but it, it makes a book very difficult to work in. Like the spine doesn't lay flat on the table. It kind of, kind of, you know, moves around a bit. But um, the couple that I have for myself, they're, they're more for inspiration anyway. They're not really um, working journals per se. So we'll just get all these holes in here. And sometimes, depending on the fabric, um, depending on the fabric, I can't see the holes that I've poked through on this side, but, but I just kind of work it with my needle and eventually I find it. So I'm just gonna take that off now because I'm done, done with it. And you can see, you can see the five, you know, the five, rows of holes and they're mostly mostly lined up and centered okay <clears throat> I use a waxed cord um, this one here I actually bought a ton of these spools from actually was in the US and it's called main thread company I don't know I saw an ad somewhere for them and they have all these gorgeous colors of twine and uh, all this, all the waxed cording and, and, and everything. So this one, the size of this one is 0 0.035 of an inch. And this was about 210 feet. I, I can't, I don't remember how much I paid for them. I, I bought five or six. So, um, you know, it was a, it was a good shipment, but anyhow, so now to measure the cording, I usually go about three times the length. So I'll go one, two, three, and then I'll, I'll cut it there. And I try to cut it at a bit of an angle, and I'll tell you why I do that. Then I take that edge, I take my needle that's got a pretty big eye, and then I try, and then I get the the cording in um, from the slanted edge. And I didn't really do that great of a job. Sometimes this is so it's sort of thick, but. Um, it's really strong and I think it's really good um, cording for for a um, a junk journal to hold a journal together um, you can use anything you want you can use rope string I've even seen people use dental floss I think I tried dental floss one time but um, I, I found it too slippery it, uh, it 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 moved my my signatures around too much so I didn't, I didn't, that was right at the very beginning of me doing junk journals, but anyhow, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to start with the last signature 
And the first thing I do is I'm just going to go into the center hole. Now when you pull the thread through like this, um, one way to make sure this doesn't go through the hole is you could, where did I put that paper clip? You could paper clip it. Um, I don't anymore. Some people put a knot in theirs. I don't do that either. I just try to keep a real close eye on it because you don't want to pull it through. So I don't know how well that's going to hold, but um, just, you know, just kind of for, just to show you an, an, another option to, to hold your cording because you don't want to pull this one through. Okay, so then you've, you've got your cord through your signature. Then you're going to go through the middle hole of your book and you're just going to pull it right out. Oh, another tool I use is a pair of pliers. Um, sometimes I find that helps. So I'm going to do it because I am going to need it. I know I've, I've, I've had to use it in the past, so I'm not sure how this would be any different. Okay, so now the next thing is we need to go into this hole, this upper hole, from the outside. Now, I can't actually see it. So what I do is I'll just take my pokey tool, I put it in the hole, and I can see where it's coming out. I don't know if you can, but my, my, the pokey tool is coming right out, right there. So all I'm gonna do is try to follow the path in with my needle and pull the tool out at the same time. And so that's how I find the hole on on fabric that I can't see the holes that I made. Okay, this one's really stuck. Wow. There. <laughs> that one did not want to come out or come in or out. And then because I've already created a hole there, um, I just get the pin in that hole. And you know, it, it, you don't have to super tighten it at this point. And then now I'm going to go in the top hole. And then it comes out. <laughs> it comes out the back of the signature. Um, I'm not going to super tighten it yet. Um, well, I'm going to have to tighten it a little bit, but. Okay. And then out through the top hole, out through that hole, and then, okay, so this is what we have so far on the outside. I'm going to tighten this one a bit. Now what we need to do at this point is we need to go back into this hole. And what we absolutely cannot do is, is or what we need to really make sure doesn't happen is that you go into the thread. You don't wanna go into that cording at all. This new cord has to be completely, completely free of that cord that's already in there. And almost every time that I put a signature into a, or into a journal, I go into the thread and there is a way you'll know when you're in there because then you can't tighten it up quite or you'll see this piece come up so uh, like we'll see if I if I was came free of it or not so when I start pulling it out if this other thread moves you've most likely gone through but it looks like I I it looks like I did fine, <laughs> but there may be an instance where I will end up actually going through. Okay, so for the next step, what I do is I don't go in through the, the middle hole again, but I think some people do. I don't. I go down to this hole, like the next, or the bottom, like in, in the middle of the bottom, come out there tighten up a bit and then go through that hole there need my pliers no 
I didn't really need them. Then I go through the bottom. And once again, I can't see the hole. So I'm going to take my pokey tool. I'm going to put it in the bottom. And I can see where it's sticking out. And I'm going to try to line up my pin exactly where that, that pokey tool left a hole. And then I pull my pokey tool out. And there's my, there's my pin. Okay. And then that one goes into the bottom, sig bottom hole of the signature. This is a bit of an awkward process. So, um, and now, you know, pull your threads to make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, even at this point, I will check the outsides. Like this one here looks a bit loose, but that's because it's attached to this one here. And I had, I had um, pulled that or loosened it. So now it's a bit tighter. It, I'm not going to use this actually, but because I think I'm fine now from that coming out. Okay, and now we gonna, we're going to go in in through this hole here trying to keep not to go through that thread don't don't go through that wax thread and then again don't go through the wax thread go through the hole in the spine of the book the hole through the spine in the book and missing the thread and now when I go to pull it out, I'll be able to see if this thread pulls up as I'm pulling this out. I'm, I probably went through, but it looks like it's free and clear and I can tighten it nicely. So I think I'm, I'm almost a hundred percent sure that I made it free and clear. And now we're going to go into that middle hole. So what you have to do is just once again, not going through the thread, but going through the exact same hole that was there. And it looks like I might have hit it properly. And we'll only know when we go to tighten up the, the rope or the cording. Um, because if it doesn't tighten, it means that you probably went through the cord. Now this is probably the most difficult part of this process. It's getting this pin into this hole and not going through the, the thread, the cord, or the, yeah. So you kind of have to manipulate your book. You have to, you know, just try to get it in there without, maybe, maybe, you know what might help is actually to loosen up some of the threads because we can tighten them after. Do you know what I mean? just to loosen up the signature a bit, just to pull it away a bit. And then um, I'm gonna see if I can get it into there without hitting the, without going through the thread. Well, I went through the sewing, but <laughs> that's okay. We can pop it out after. Or can we? Oh yeah, that's fine. So I did not go through the the wax thread, the cording. So what I'm gonna do right now at this point is take my pin right off, okay? Because we're basically done sewing. And then I'm just gonna use my pokey tool to get it out of that zigzag stitch that it caught onto. And then what I'm gonna do is pull the cording to that side. So we have one on each side of that center hole Oh, you know what? Another thing we need to make sure, too, is that you're putting it right side up. And we're right side up. Oh, that scared me for a second. <laughs> okay. We're right side up. We're good. Okay, so now at this point, I will just take these these um, loose loose threads, and I will just yank on them and make sure it's nice and tight in there. And then I open, and then I'll go to the spine, and I'll make sure that these are nice and and tight on there. And then once I'm confident that they are, 
I will once again tighten, tighten, and then I'll put a knot, I'll put my knot in, in the middle. And I double it because uh, I don't want that coming out. Well, actually, now it's more of a knot. Now, um, I'm going to keep these long because I want to hang buttons from them. But I'm not going to hang the buttons just yet. I actually kind of wish this one was a little bit longer, but that's okay. The next one will do it. Um, we'll hang buttons from them after because those danglies will be annoying when you're trying to put in the the signatures. So if you look at where this one landed, you've got, you know... A, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch on that side, a little bit less of a, than a quarter of an inch, and um, you know, just sort of make sure it opens and closes, and then you look inside and it fits in there nicely. Um, so yeah, so we'll do the next signature, and then uh, and then I think we'll I'll move on from there. I'll come back when it's all done, and. Um, Okay, so three, three, oh, I mixed that up. So three times the length of the book. And so what I noticed was that this was the one that I had left inside. And this is the one that I was working with, the long one that I was working with. So I think I'm going to leave a little bit more inside this time, just so that I end up with a longer, a longer um, ending end. Okay, so now we get that slightly slanted edge of cording, and sometimes the needle needs to be cleaned because it gets a little bit of that waxy residue. I should probably get a new needle. Oh, that one in. That one in pretty easily. So this time I'm going to leave a little bit more um, on the inside. Okay, so this is the fourth signature because remember we're working backwards. Okay, so here we go again. Start in the middle. And you can see, right? Okay, start in the middle. Pull that out like that. Okay, so like I said, I want to leave more. So I'm gonna I'm going to um that looks like a good amount. So I'm gonna leave that much on that side. And no, I'm not gonna paper clip it this time, so I'm gonna just be very aware that it's there and try not to pull it through. So now it goes into the second last row of holes and it goes into the middle. And then I'm gonna need my pliers again. And I'll pull it out with my pliers and see where we went there. Okay, try to keep that one fairly long. Okay, so now, once again, I can't see the hole that I created in here, so I'm going to use my, my pokey tool. I'm, I'm coming, this is up, so I'm going to go into this hole, and I can see where my pokey tool is sticking out, and then I'm just going to direct my, my needle into there. And then pull my pokey tool out and grab my, I want to try to keep that long, okay? So then it goes into this second hole. And then it's going to go into the very top hole. Let's see how I can maneuver this so you can... You can see better. So into the top hole. And we'll just pull that out. And then into the top hole of the spine. OK. 
Okay, and then we'll just pull that out with the tweezers. Okay, now it starts where um, you don't want to, you want to go into this hole again, this, this one that you've already come out of, and you don't want to go into the, into the cording, into the waxed cording. You just want to go in through the hole. And you'll know if you hit the cording, if this cording even moves a little bit and it doesn't look like it did. So now we're, we've got to go through, actually I'm going to leave this one a little bit looser this time so that I don't have so many problems trying to get in the middle. So now we go through this hole again, being sure to be free of the cord. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like, oh no, it didn't, it didn't. If you pull on this one, sometimes you can see where it did, it did grab onto the, to the cord. Um, but we're okay. Sorry, I thought, I thought I, I thought I'd gone through the cord and I could have showed you um, what I did. Okay, so we're going to skip the middle hole. We're going to go down to this hole, the second from the bottom. And then we're going to just pull our thread through. And then we're going to go into the second from the bottom hole in the spine. And then pull that through. Now once again, pokey tool so I can see where I'm going. And then just get my, my needle into the hole there. I'm in the wrong place. Look at what I did. <laughs> I went into the wrong, I was wondering why it was so easy. I need to be in this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then that comes through there. And then this one goes through. Oh, I can't see, even see the hole in the paper. Did I make one? I think I did. Okay. And then that comes up like that. And then back through this hole. And back through. I find it easier just to pull it out of the signature first and then into the spine. And then into the spine. And looks like we cleared it. And now back into the center. Oh, I don't need that. I didn't really need that either, actually because my thread is coming out of there. I still can't see it very well. There we go. I feel like I might have hit thread. We'll see. Okay. And now this has to go back. Oh, see it? It's all kind of tight again. Anyway, we're going to make it work. It's got to go into the signature. Yeah. So I think what I want to do is loosen it again, I think. Yeah. I'm just going to loosen the the signatures a little bit so that the signature or the, the the you know, the stitches so that this is not so tight. And then it might give me an easier chance to get into the whole of the book. You know, my spine doesn't really bend. <laughs> okay. 
Am I going through? I can't even tell. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. I think this is a lot easier than I'm actually making it look, but we are determined to get it in there. Okay, there, I got it through. Took a little bit of doing. <laughs> Okay, so I want one thread on one side of that center. And look at that, I went through it. So I'm just going to take this. And then um, we're going to pull it through again. Like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull on my threads. Just to make sure everything... Oh, look at... See, I did go through it. So in this case... We'll get them both on the same side. If, if you look close enough, you can actually see where the thread is coming through. So I'm going to just actually try to maneuver this so that it, it comes out. I don't know how to explain this or even show you because it's, it's quite, I'm going to, I think I can show you. Like if you look. If you look right there, you can see where this thread is going through this thread. So what I've done is I've just used my pokey tool and I just put it in there and, and pulled. And so you can detach it from that, from that thread. So now they're detached. So that's what I was talking about. I wouldn't have been able to tighten my signatures um, at all with that stuck in there because uh, it just, it, it doesn't allow, it just doesn't work. Trust me, it doesn't. <laughs> um, anyway, so now I'm just gonna pull my, my, my cording tight on both sides. And now once again, double check that it's pretty, it's pretty tight on the back. It looks fairly straight. That's, see when you're eyeballing things, you know, you, you're not always going to get perfectly straight, but I mean, even when you measure, sometimes you're not getting perfectly straight. So it's straight enough for me. Okay. So now I'm just going to tie that into a knot. And so I did make it a little bit longer, which I like because then I'll be able to dangle a button from there. See this other one. I, I won't, I won't be able to, that's just not long enough. But I'll make a knot in it. Anyhow, so there. So that's the, that is the um, fourth signature. So if you look in there, you can kind of see how they sit. They're at a good height. They're both, they're very even. And the bottom, we've got just the cording sticking out. And then, um, so I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to finish the other three signatures. And then... Um, We'll just do a quick flip through of the book. All right, we have it all done. It is completely um, sewn into the book, the five hole pamphlet stitch. You can kind of see where I went a little crooked there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, if I hang a tassel from there, you won't even be able to see that. Looks like a little owl in jail. <laughs> Anyhow, it is all bound and um, the pages all work. I attached buttons to all of the, you know, the leftover cording. And um, yeah, I can kind of see in here where I went a little off. You know, that is something that I might actually change. <laughs> that could bug me. But anyway, um, it's done and... Um, there's the flip through of all the pages and then the final page. So that's that. Now the one thing I didn't use in this one that I used in this one was the, um, the fabric, the piece of fabric for safety pins. Um, 
I'm not sure I'm going to do it. If, if I find that I need it down the road, I will perhaps just glue a piece of fabric on and then see if I can get that um, snap tool to work through, to work through, you know, the thickness of this, this cover. I, I can't see why not. I mean, it goes through denim, so uh, we'll give it a shot. But anyhow, so that's that. That's our altered paperclip folio. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this, this kind of craft with me sort of, you know, thing that I, that I did. <laughs> um, and I hope that you do try to make one yourselves. And if you do, um, please share it with me on Instagram. Just tag me, um, fabric lace ink paper. I would love to see what, what you come up with or do a YouTube video and, and just let me know, send me a message and let me know that you've got a video. I'll, um, if I'm not subscribed to you, I will subscribe to you and I will check out your video. Anyhow, thanks again, everybody, for watching, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it, and um, yeah, so we'll um, talk to you soon. I think my next video is going to be um, my less than 1,000 subscriber giveaway, <laughs> but that might be a little while still, but that's kind of where I'm sort of aiming right now. Um, yeah, so anyhow, take care, you guys. Be safe, stay well, and we'll see you soon. Bye.